Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. The Trans Peninsular Line begins in Mardella and ends in Fenwick Island. The story of this landmark goes back to the dispute between the Calvert and Penn families, which eventually led to the boundaries that now make up Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. It is a somewhat twisted tale in which bad maps led to bad blood. It all began when two different British kings paid their debts with land in the American colonies to two different aristocrats, Cecilius Calvert and William Penn. Calvert had the earlier claim with his gift from Charles II, but the paperwork and relevant surveying calculations were not accurate. Penn's gift came later from King Charles' brother, the Duke of York, who gave away more than what was actually available. When he became King James II, this became a moot point, for a time. The Penn and Calvert families squabbled about all this back in England without much actual knowledge of the land itself across the ocean. Colonists here were left to deal with the confusing consequences which led to Cresap's War, where settlers along the Susquehanna River literally battled for their property rights. When the British government realized that all this confusion was preventing them from collecting taxes in the region, they demanded that the Penns and Calverts work out an agreement in 1724. This did not last long, and in 1732 the two families were forced back to the bargaining table finally agreeing that the lower three counties of Pennsylvania, now known as Delaware's Newcastle, Kent, and Sussex counties, would belong to the Pens. Everything west and south of the 40-degree latitude line down to Virginia would remain the property of the Calverts. Things remained somewhat disputed here on Delmarva until 1750. Surveyors from both Maryland and Pennsylvania were jointly commissioned to establish the boundary between the two colonies and prevent further confusion. But again, bad maps and surveying practices got in the way and led to the Calverts losing a bit more land to the Pens. The dividing line was to be drawn from where 40 degrees latitude intersected a 12-mile circle around the city of Newcastle, proceeding southward through the center of the peninsula. The border was then supposed to take a turn 90 degrees, traveling due east to Cape Henlopen. Present-day Cape Henlopen was then also referred to as Cape Cornelius. Apparently, the location of Cape Henlopen had also been a bone of contention between the two families. The surveyors arrived at what they believed to be the agreed-upon Cape, in present-day Fenwick Island, and began their work on the Trans-Peninsular Line. Though it is the easternmost point along the Atlantic coast in this region, it actually does not represent a marked enough change in the coastline to qualify as a cape. The surveyors found a stake on the beach which they presumed to be a landmarker and used it as their starting point. Historians now think that it was simply a fisherman's tie-off stake. Traveling westerly, Headed for the Chesapeake, the surveyors reached it, completing their task on June 12, 1751. You're listening to the Delmarva Almanac. I'm Dana Kester McCabe, and we're talking about the Trans Peninsular Line. Permanent stone markers were supposed to be laid down every five miles for 25 miles, ending at the midpoint of the peninsula. The crest of each family was engraved on either side, indicating whose land was on which side. Unfortunately, their path went right through the swampy headwaters of the Pocomoke River, where there were not many practical places to lay the stone markers. There are markers, just not every five miles. Though the eventual Delaware border is a straight line, the surveyors meandered along what is now Delaware Route 54. When Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon completed their famous survey in 1761, they were given the job of confirming the connecting border northward from the Trans-Peninsular Line to the 12-mile circle centered on the city of Newcastle and creating Maryland's northern border. British King George III ratified the resulting Mason-Dixon line separating Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Delaware in 1769. Today you can see a Trans-Peninsular Line marker on the north side of Route 54 east of Mardella Springs at Delmarva's approximate midpoint. There is also a marker in Delmar. It is known as the town that is too big for one state because the line dissects it, putting half in the state of Maryland and half in the state of Delaware. 
It's believed that forest was cut down along the survey line and colonists were encouraged to settle along it in order to help enforce the Penn-Calvert Agreement. There is no clear reason why Delmar inhabitants failed to choose one side or the other. Another marker is near the state border in Selbyville on Route 113 near Pomeroy's, which was known as one of the oldest taverns in Delaware, but sadly burned down recently. Finally, there is a marker in Fenwick Island at the foot of the town's lighthouse, which was built in 1859. If we can learn anything from history, it's that borders are not necessarily reliable and sometimes cause more problems than they fix. They are, in many ways, imaginary and therefore no guarantee of anything. On the upside, though there have been conflicts from time to time, since we gained independence, it has been the open borders between our states which have provided an environment where commerce and goodwill can thrive, proving once again that when we focus less on what divides us, we find ourselves uniting. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, check out the reference links for this story at our website, delmarvalmanac.com history. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters, eatdrinkbyart.com, for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.